Africa, the second largest continent on earth, is a diverse and rich tapestry of nations, cultures and landscapes. While some African countries such as Ghana, Kenya, Uganda and even South Africa are widely acknowledged and celebrated, there exists a group of nations that often remains in the shadows, the identities concealed by a broader narrative surrounding these countries. Today's video aims to shed light on some of these lesser known African countries, showcasing their unique characteristics and narratives. Leading our discussion for today is Sao Tome and Principe. This country is known as Africa's heaven on earth. The Democratic Republic of Sao Tome and Principe boasts lush rainforests filled with endemic plants and species, complemented by white sandy beaches and crystal clear waters. Despite its enviable natural beauty, this nation remains one of the least visited countries globally. Situated on the equator in the Gulf of Guinea, Sao Tome and Principe comprises two main islands, Sao Tome Island and Principe Island, along with several rocky islets. The capital, Sao Tome City, lies in the northeastern part of Sao Tome Island, and the country shares its Atlantic coast with neighboring Gabon and Equatorial Guinea. With a modest population exceeding 200,000 people, Sao Tome and Principe proudly showcases its lush rainforests, volcanic landscapes and rich biodiversity. Having gained independence from Portuguese colonization in 1975, the nation has forged its own unique cultural identity. Now, while Sao Tome and Principe remains a developing country, its economy has historically centered around plantation agriculture. The country is renowned for its cocoa production, earning it the title of the Chocolate Island due to its significant capacity for cocoa cultivation. In addition to cocoa, Sao Tome and Principe also actively export palm kennels, coffee and copra, which is the dried white flesh of a coconut, all of which contributes to the nation's economic landscapes. Moving away from the lush rainforest of Sao Tome and Principe, the next country on our list of forgotten African countries is Comoros. Created through volcanic activity over the ages, the Comoros is a nature lover's paradise from stunning coral reefs that offer exquisite diving experiences to uninterrupted white sandy beaches, dense forests and active volcanoes, the archipelago captivates with its natural beauty. However, despite its allure, Comoros faces challenges, notably economic instability, making it one of the least developed nations globally, with a significant portion of its population living below the poverty line. The island country, which is situated between Madagascar and the coast of Mozambique, comprises four islands, which are Grand Comor, Moheli, Andron, and Mayud. While three of these islands were annexed by the French in the 19th century, hence their names, Comoros declared independence from France in 1975. However, Mayotte, the fourth island remained a French territory as its residents voted against independence. Ranked as the third smallest African country by area, Comoros has Moroni as its capital and largest city. The predominant religion in this island country is Sunni Islam and as a member of the Arab League, it stands as the only country in the Arab world entirely in the Southern Hemisphere. Often referred to as the Perfume Islands due to its fragrant plant life, Comoros served as a crucial trading post for Arab, Persian, African and European traders from the 15th century onward. It remains the world's largest producer of Ilang Ilang, an essential oil used in the perfume industry. Comoros also exports staples such as vanilla, cinnamon and cloves, contributing to its economic activities. Shifting our focus to the next country on our exploration, we have Djibouti. Strategically located at the entrance to the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden, Djibouti is a small but vital country in the Horn of Africa. This nation with a population of approximately 1 million people serves as a major gateway for international trade and hosts military bases for several countries. 
Djibouti's landscapes range from arid deserts to volcanic plateaus, providing a backdrop for its diverse cultural heritage and historic sites. Some tourist attractions in Djibouti include Lake Asal, which is the lowest point in Africa, Day Forest National Park, Lake Abbey, and the fascinating landscapes of the Afar Triangle. It is a multi-ethnic country. The two largest ethnic groups are the Somalis and Afars, and as such, the country's culture is primarily rooted in Somali and Afar traditions. Our final stop in this exploration of lesser-known African countries is Eswatini, formerly known as Swaziland. Officially renamed the Kingdom of Eswatini on April 19, 2018 by King Mswati III, this change marked the 15th anniversary of the country's independence from Britain and aimed to align with the name commonly used by its citizens. The king also said that the name change was due to confusion when traveling abroad, as people often refer to the country as Switzerland. Now let's explore the geographical location of Eswatini. The Kingdom of Eswatini is a landlocked country to the east of South Africa. It's almost entirely surrounded by the larger country, but also shares a border with Mozambique. With a population of around 1.2 million people, Eswatini is known for its scenic landscapes, including the Izuwini Valley and the Lumbombo Mountains. The country boasts a rich cultural heritage and operates as an absolute monarchy, with King Mswati III reigning since 1986. Despite occasional confusion with South Africa, it is essential to note that Eswatini and South Africa, although neighboring with historical and geographical connections, stand as distinct entities on the African continent, each possessing unique political systems, cultures, and histories. While countries like Eswatini, Comoros, Djibouti, and Sao Tome and Principe are often considered lesser known or overlooked, it is crucial to recognize their worth and significance. Each nation has its own limitations and unique characteristics, and raising awareness about them fosters a more inclusive understanding of global diversity. By combating stereotypes and promoting accurate representations, we can appreciate the rich histories, cultures, and contributions of these nations. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I would love to hear your thoughts as well about these countries and why they may not be widely known. Also, if there are any other countries I might have missed, let me know. Please do well to subscribe to this channel to expand your knowledge about global matters and countries around the world. Goodbye and see you again in our next video.